Hello everyone, this is Thor Young with Bear Bull Traders, and I would like to do a recap on Netflix for you today. In today's recap, I'd like to highlight how the daily chart can give you a lot of information about what to do with your intraday trades and how to plan a trade based upon those levels. All right, so we talk a lot about a Bear Bull Trader about these magic uh, levels that we use, and really, you know, whether they're magic or not is to be determined. But what we found is these levels are consistent levels that lots of traders use across various trading communities, prop desks, and whatnot. So as long as everybody kind of views them the same way, they tend to be transacted upon. So the method that we use for identifying levels are looking for key levels that have um, seem to have a lot more importance than others, where you've had multiple touches on your daily chart to those levels, or you've been in and around it, but you create a pivot around those levels. So on the daily chart here on Netflix, you'll notice that we had some interesting levels as I zoom out. One level is you basically have this level that comes back through here that pivots, and that's somewhere up around like 298.80. So it's managed to get through there and hold, every, but it came back through there before. Back here is where we kind of went to the top of. So that was certainly an, an, a level I was interested in. Uh, making sure it got above, but most importantly, on a closer scale, is this level here at 290.36. Now, the reason why I like this particular level is because this level exists right on top of the previous day's uh, high um, or and the previous day's close. So those are both very important, and if you look backwards on that level, we've also had previous times where the daily chart had come up to those levels and tried to test them, but then rejected. So this, you know, it tested, came through this level, but it couldn't get up and it rejected and ended up coming back down. Very similar here, testing this level and breaking down. So we've had multiple time spans in this entire month, really, where this stock has been attempting to break out on this level. So in anticipation of this, I went ahead and marked this level, 296. I called it 35 because I like the, the easier number. So I went ahead into my Netflix trade here with that in mind. So Netflix opened, and it opened a little weak to start, but that's relatively common with um, stocks that are in play and are strong stocks. They most often have a bit of a sell-off in the morning. So you can't let that scare you off into thinking Netflix is going to be weak, weak, but you also can't make an assumption and take an entry down here in the 294 area. Now, there are some, uh, some knife strategies that may make that happen, and depending on what the L2 looked like, you might have felt comfortable with that, but... For me, trading into a previous day's close, a previous day's high, and VWAP and every other moving average is a little riskier. Plus, you have to hold a really wide stop getting in near here with a loss of 23. You're talking a dollar to a dollar fifty stop, and it's really hard to get a good profitable risk reward ratio off of that. You know, you're relegating to taking 10 or 15 shares at that point. So what I did, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see Netflix get above my key level so that we're now sitting on top of all of the moving averages and I wanted to use 296 as my potential exit. And as you can see, it came up here, it claimed um, previous day's close, the previous day's high, and it man and it came back, pushed back, could not make it back to two, uh, 296, rather was a few pennies shy, so as it pushed back up, I went ahead and took a long uh, in at 296.50 my loss on that trade was going to be if we lost 296. So 50 cent risk on this one. Went long, um, got some very easy partials right off the bat. Um, you know, easily got over a dollar move real quick there. And then some quick partials um, up. But as you can tell, basically all of my partials for the most part are at 50 cent increments as we're moving up. Um, and I was decrementing by about 10 to 20% per partial, uh, just depending on key levels. So we got all the way up to $301, which was already a very nice move, almost a, you know, almost a $5 move, four and a half dollar move, uh, just out of that. And we pulled back here, managed to hold the 20 moving average and bounce from it. So when it reclaimed the nine moving average, I added in, went ahead and got some nice partials there, this time all the way up to 30150. Um, so, which gives me a, you know, grand total, quite a lot of move, but we came back down and I stopped out at break even on my ad. So at this point, I stopped out. I wanted to get back into the stock. I really saw it holding the 20 moving average and I thought it looked really good. But at this point, I'm already $150 over my daily profit target. 
So there's just no way I can possibly get back into this trade, despite the fact that it just looks amazing for a run. So um, Netflix ended up going, certainly might have left a little bit on the table here, but if this had cracked and went the other direction, I would have been really upset giving some of that money back. So being over my daily goal and having all of that, it just it's just too risky to get back in, even on a strong stock. So I hope this um, helps everybody a little bit. You know, I want to talk about how you can use the daily level to get in. But once you're in and you have your levels, put together a game plan for when you would like to get into the stock. And if that game plan comes to fruition, then you can go ahead and take the entry rather than saying, I want to get into Netflix, get in here. Um, down in the two, the 294, sure, that's a great entry, but also an extremely risky one where this one was a great entry, but gave you a very obvious entry, a very obvious stop and a very obvious move up afterwards. So I hope everybody has enjoyed my recap today. I hope you're all staying green. Have a great one.